Right. Oh. <sighs> oh, Jesus. Come here. Do you know, funerals are shocking expensive, so I hear. Right, yeah, but you don't have to worry about yours. I have it all sorted. Jesus, that's very good of you. Yeah. Now, <clears throat> I don't want to coach and horses and children crying after me and all that. Oh, no. And the wake should last no more than five days. No, 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 Rog. I've left your body to Farmer Quelan's pigs. What? What? You've been shag all used to me while you're alive. Uh, at least I might make some money off you for pig feed. And the Quelans could get a, a side of bacon out of you. <laughs> well, wouldn't be the first time Mrs. Quelan's eaten me. <laughs> Raj, you're a notorious shitehawk. True. Oh, which reminds me of two other shitehawks. Huh? The most notorious shitehawks of all. Huh? Uh, back in 1784... Boyle and McSorley were known on the streets of Dublin as petty crooks and scavengers of the worst order. Lifting and stealing, pickpocketing and vice was their trade. The leeches on society they were. Oh, a bit like Jade Goody and Palmer Tara Tompkinson. <laughs> so nobody wants them, but they just won't go away. <laughs> right. Anyway, they were always on the lookout for easy money. And when the College of Surgeons opened on Stephen's Green, an opportunity for some quick cash came to light. Mm. You see, the trouble with colleges back in those days uh, was a lack of cadavers to experiment on. For notorious bollocks as Boylan McSorley, digging up freshly buried corpses was no big deal. They simply hung around the graveyards, offering fake condolences. And that same night, they would dig up the dead and discreetly exchange the bodies for a handsome fee. No questions asked. <laughs> I've got a question. Go on. Is this shagging story going anywhere? So i got to take a Brillo pad to me teeth. There's a layer of plaque a month thick on me dentures. Stay where you are before uh, I cauterize your lad on the range. Jesus. As the College of Surgeons grew, so did the demand for corpses of all manner, shapes and sizes. Boyle and McSorley were making tidy profits from grave robbing. The trouble was, they weren't the only ones. Other festering scabs from all over the country got in on the act. So much so that armed guards were eventually stationed at the graveyards. Shit. Oh, the jig was up. Yeah, not quite, Rog. Oh, tell us more. Well, the two scoundrels knew that the college would still need bodies, and now that the well of corpses had run dry, they would pay over the odds for any deliveries. Ah. <laughs> and that's when their tale uh, takes a more sinister twist. Murder, she wrote. Got it in one, Angela Langersbury. <laughs> <laughs> but as you well know, Murder is a risky business. Oh, yes. You've got to be very careful covering your tracks. Mm. But Boyle and McSorley were expert con men. They began hanging around Dublin's seedier inns, looking for single people a little worse for the way. Once they spotted their prey, they swooped in like vultures. Oh, 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 sorry, I do apologise most sincerely. Let me help. I'm uh, uh, fine, I'm uh, fine. I insist you join us for a small drop. No, no, there's really no need. Uh, they would spike the drink with hemlock and pretend to help the unsuspecting drunkard home. Did they slice their gizzards down a darkened alley? <laughs> no, no, no. Any signs of murder in the jig would have been up. Uh. They tied the now unconscious fool by the legs and simply doused him in the liffy. The poor unfortunate drowned without a struggle. Then they hung him out to dry, getting rid of not only the water in his lungs, but all fluid, including any traces of hemlock. And then they dirtied the corpses up a bit, put them in a shroud, and if anyone asked, they'd managed to sneak in the back gate of the graveyard to dig up a fresh one. Oh, <laughs> I tell you, I've got to hand it to those whores, Melts. <laughs> they had a bit of an entrepreneurial streak to them. That's right. Uh, they lost count of the amount of poor Egypt they'd knocked off. Mm. But it was the night of February 24th, 1789, uh, that their luck was about to run out. 
Yeah, Big Brother came on, and the whole nation was hooked. <laughs> and nobody went out for a month. <laughs> yeah, Roger, hmm? it was 1789. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, good, good, good man, good man. Anyway, down the Keys they spotted a young fella sculling back the ale. The perfect target. <laughs> Everything went as per usual. They'd gotten their system down to an impressive two hours. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they arrived at the back door of the college with the corpse, and they were let in by the eminent surgeon, Professor Columbus Coldcase. Mm -hmm. When he saw the young man's corpse, he asked the two where they had procured the body from. Where did you get it? It happened Monday, apparently. Tragic, of course, so young and all. They lied. About the money. Porters! Porters! Boyle and McSorley were in for Find quite a busy. surprise. Well, that really is extraordinary. Seeing as I dined with my son only this afternoon. Take them away. Bollocks. The burly night porters grabbed Boyle and McSorley and they were done for murder. Jesus. The judge, being a very good friend of the professors, allowed him to decide their fate. And Ireland was the first country to host a live autopsy. Oh, oh Jesus. Slit from gizzard to gullet with not a sniff of an anaesthetic. <laughs> what a way to go. <laughs> <laughs> Pudge, hmm. you know the way you said you're going to sell me dead corpse to the Quelans for pig food? Yeah. Well, what if instead I gave me body to science? Hmm. Well, after making nothing with me life, at least I could do some good when I'm gone, you know? Yeah, that's, that's, that's a noble thought, yeah, Roger, a yeah. noble thought indeed. <laughs> Except for one tiny problem. Uh. Nobody would want your filthy, pockmarked, scabies-ridden, bulbous, bloated, sweaty, leather-skinned, pus-filled, stinky, rancid, putrid, vile corpse to even piss on! Pig food it is, so. Good. That's settled, then. <sighs> <sniffs> You do know that that's the most annoying noise in the world. Huh? Oh, sorry, sorry. Jesus Christ. No, wait, I was wrong. Get me up there, Paul. Oh, jeez, I have to go. <laughs> I dreamt it in. <laughs> 